Well, I'm Duncan Jordan. I'm a group director of the County Council, and uh, I've been involved in bikes since I was about 14. Yeah, my name is Peter Jones. I'm the uh, Deputy Chief Executive of Gloucestershire County Council, and I've been riding bikes since 16, which is about 10 years ago. But he did have an incredibly dodgy start, didn't he? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about Happily, that? Happily, I, um, I started riding. My first bike was a, a Lambretta hybrid. It was a bits of uh, many Lambrettas. And I sat down for a few weeks ago. It was blue and yellow because they were the colours that my dad had on the stairs. So it was Dulux blue and Dulux yellow. And uh, when I took my driving test, because there was no CBT, just applied for a license, it was raining hard. And I can remember the instructor saying, you go around the block for a few times and I'll let you know when it's finished. And he forgot I was there. And it was only when this blue and yellow slam bread went past, he realised I'd gone to uh, the block too many times. So he let me pass and there was no more questions. He felt sorry for me. So uh, that was in the 70s. Uh, well, but it's much more difficult now. And more appropriate. More appropriate for time. How about you, Duncan? How did you get on? Well, mine was a bit more up to date than that, but, but not hugely. Um, I started off on a, on a busy, uh, legendary machine. Uh, I spent most of my life being pulled over by the police and given yellow tickets for one thing or another. And what did you wear? What kit were you wearing? Well, you know, I was amazingly good actually, because I went for the most advanced form of leather protection you could have in those days. And uh, an open face crash helmet that you could squeeze together. You know, I think it was all about five pounds. And these, you know, glass goggles, just in case you fell off. And uh, yeah, pretty well kitted out. And the best trainers and uh, so on. Yeah. So, I got mine from Army Circus Store because there wasn't there was some bike kit, but it was it was very expensive and uh, it was very smelly. I always remember it smelling of wax and all that like ghastly stuff. Yeah. And uh, I used to wear all this Army Circus stuff, not camouflage, you know, old, mm. old Wellington boots and stuff like that. And I remember once I was working one evening. And uh, as a method of occupation for people working with, they weighed me and weighed my bike. And when I was fully rigged, because it was in the middle of the winter, I weighed three times more than the bike. <laughs> and after Monday night, I'd never go up the hills. And, uh, and the really steep hills going out of London, I had to get off it. It was only a, a, a step through Honda, a Honda 90, so it wasn't the yeah. most powerful thing I'd ever owned. But uh, when I started realising this, uh, this concept of power to weight, I got it the wrong way round. Guys and girls I know have taken up bike and have said to me, I've spent thousands on the bike but I haven't got enough for a kit. Yeah, and you exactly. think, well, why are you working? Yeah. You're only doing that. And you do it. Yeah. Put a little bit more for the kit. Because mm. the chances you come in off in the early stages, and we've all been there, we've been watching our bike carry on while you're, while you're not, yeah. is uh, a, th a matter of life. And, and uh, if you're sitting there and you can get up and do it again, then you've got a good kit. Yeah, you can't, you, you've got it wrong. Um, you know, we've had mates when we've gone over to Europe, when they come over for the first time, they've been in there in jeans and mm. what have you. And, uh, it's just a nonsense, apart from the safety aspects. You're freezing cold, you're uncomfortable, you're not going to ride well. And yet, you're right, they've got a spanky bit of new kit on them and mm. uh, just not thought about themselves. Yeah, you're right. The kit actually makes you ride better, mm. it allows you ride quicker, and it actually makes you ride more safely. Mm. And I think people miss that. If you're cold, you lose concentration. If you're wet, you get miserable. Again, you lose concentration. That 10 second lapse of concentration mm. is going to make the difference between you getting around the corner and not. Yeah, absolutely. So when did you get into advanced riding? I, um, when I came to Gloucestershire, I'd ridden bikes for a long time. I had a layoff period for a few years, the kids and all those sort of things. And I came back and there was a, a circular going around about uh, improve riding and I'd be quite honest I wasn't keen. I thought I'd go along there, there would be a load of people wearing reflective jackets and um, talking about camshafts and things and bits and pieces I didn't understand and a lot of coppers there that were going to prejudge and I was wrong. I was completely wrong. They were a couple of well time served PCs that were 100% bikers that were very grown up and presented better riding mm. in a way I think only they could do it because they had the experience of two things. One, they've seen more than we would want to see um, what happens when it goes wrong. Mm. And then they translate that to us mm. in um, a way that says, 
But if you do this, if you just make that final adjustment, yeah, if you just respect that bit of road, and one thing they did say to me, it always makes me chuckle, that um, these highways engineers didn't put these signs up to keep themselves amused. And now we know in the main that's right, don't we? That they're there, that road engineering's there for a reason. Why ignore it? You know, if it is saying it's a tight end, then just get your bike and yourself in a position where you do it. And I learned a lot when I was stuck with that. And, mm -hmm. uh, Every year when I sort of come out of mothballs, and I try to ride throughout the year, but January and February now is rapidly becoming, you can't do it, it's yeah. too cold, it's too snowy. What's, what's, what are you going to lose for a few hours mm. on a good good event with people of like mind that are not going to prejudge you? Yeah. They're not going to say this, that, whatever. All they want you to do is ride better and more safely. Mm. Have, did you, have you been on any advanced riding? was very much about South Tour mm. and when I first started going over to Europe we got in with Rosper and I think it was there that I switched on to defensive riding because actually I was one of those I want to take the racing line on the road in the same way that I was around the track and actually that's not the fastest line or the safest line and mm. if you learn defensive riding you become inherently I think smoother if you want to be faster, you can be faster, but it isn't about speed, it's about the smoothness, getting the corner and right. And if you can combine that, that, that learning experience with the fun and the, the freedom that you get with doing a tractor, mm. I think that's the, the ultimate combination because I'm sure there'll be the opportunity for people to have a bit of a play and do things that you wouldn't do on the road or you certainly shouldn't be doing on the road. And you're doing it with like-minded people. And there's this thing about there's so much technology now moved into mm. bike. If someone's not ridden a bike for 20 years and they move onto a bike today, they will see almost a quantum leap in everything about that bike. It's performance, it's reliability, it's braking. And why not spend a few hours being mm. taught how to get the best out of it? Yeah. Rather than sort of making it up as you go along yeah. on something, on a, on a piece of machinery that won't stand up on its own. Yeah. And that's the fundamental. If you leave a bike on its own, it's going to fall over. Yeah. If you ride a bike badly, you're going to fall over with it. Um, and there are a lot of things you can do to stop that happening. Yeah, and true. leave the day with a big smile on your face. Um, and there's no, again, there's no prejudging, there's no right or wrong. Someone might say to you very privately, if you just did that, mm. if you braked a little bit earlier, if you looked, lifted your head up and looked ahead a bit more, mm. you'd get through that corner a lot quicker, yeah. a lot more safely, and more importantly, you'll get out at the other end to take the next corner. Yeah, and anybody that thinks that training and development is uh, it's a waste of time, mm. they're just coming from a different planet yeah. as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you take the gods of like Rossi yeah. and Stoner and people like that, they're out there doing practice after mm. practice after mm. practice, and they're honing and learning yeah. their skill all the time, yeah. and they're, they're developing that skill. So, so why as road riders should we be any different and think that we know it all? And especially if we're coming back into biking, because you're right, bikes today, have got, apart from that they've got two wheels and a lump of it yeah. in the middle, they've got no other resemblance to bikes of 10, 15, 20 years ago. No, I haven't. What we can't ignore, and you see it in your job more than I do, and I do, are the statistics. The statistics yeah, are not good, are not good for riders. Yeah. Um, what should we be saying to riders about that? Uh, what message should we leave them, do you think? It's a tough one because I love riding bikes and bikes are for the enjoyment but, but you have to recognise the fact that the statistics don't lie in this case and whilst you can distort, these aren't being distorted. Bikes, whichever way we cut it, are more risky than being in a car. Put cars and bikes together and again you're, you're enhancing your risk. Um, life should never be risk free though, you know, if we were life risk free we'd be pretty sterile yeah. society. But it's, it's about not adding to that risk and still as allowing yourself that enjoyment. But the other one that I'm particularly worried about at the moment is because of the numbers, fortunately, that get killed and injured on motorbikes. If we're not careful, Europe or UK Parliament will start decreeing that we can't do things. And the first thing that they will do is, as motorcycle news has been reporting, they'll cut the size of the engines. So that's an immediate freedom gone. It is about smart decisions now, Absolutely. isn't it? Smart kit, smart riding and smart relationships with the local community.